in this session we are going to learn about slope deflection equation method to solve statically indeterminate beams and frames this is a displacement method of analysis because all the equations are written in terms of unknown node or joint slopes and deflections slope as we know is equals to dy by dx that is also denoted by m equals to 10 theta and for small theta we know 10 theta is approximately equals to theta so the slope we will commonly denote either by dy by dx or by the rotation theta of beam at any point and the deflection will be commonly denoted by y or delta where y will be the deflection of any node or joint perpendicular to the axis of the beam segment and delta will be relative deflection of right end with respect to left end perpendicular to the axis of the beam segment. The main assumptions of slope deflection method are that we assume that all the members are actually rigid that means their length cannot change so we cannot have displacement at a node or joint along the length of a member connected at that joint and second we also ignore the effects of shear deformation so in slope deflection equation method deformation only due to bending are considered we use the common sign convention that is used for most of the structural analysis method for fixed end moments and end moments we consider clockwise moments to be positive and anti-clockwise moments to be negative similarly for rotation we consider clockwise rotation is positive and anti-clockwise rotation is negative for deflection we consider deflection of right end with respect to left end so for example if we have a beam segment a b now if this deflects say like this then this is the relative deflection of b with respect to a here a we call left end b is the right end and if the right end goes downward with respect to left end then we consider this deflection to be positive so downward deflection of right end with respect to left end is positive deflection and if the right end goes up with respect to left end then it will be negative deflection this point you have to keep in mind very carefully note that in the case of beam it is easy to identify left end and right end of the beam segment but for portal frame it is slightly confusing because depending on how we are viewing that portal frame we may have different left and right ends so the convention that i will follow is we will always view the frame like this and the columns of the frame will be viewed from inside of the portal frame so for example the column ab i will view from this side so when viewing the column from this side a will be the left end and b will be the right end for beam bc we will view from this side only so b will be the left end c will be the right end for column cd we will view from inside so c will be the left end and d will be the right end here note carefully that in the case of column ab the upper end b of the column is right end whereas in the case of column cd the upper end c is left end so when writing the sign for our deflection we have to carefully follow this notation and appropriately assign positive or negative sign for deflections now let's move to steps for solving problems 
using slope deflection equation method. The first step of slope deflection equation method is to identify unknown node or joint slopes and deflections. For a 2D structure, in general, there can be two displacements and one rotation at a node. So at node A, we may have XA, YA and theta A. But because node A has fixed support, so all three of them are zero. At node B, we have a roller support and also we have assumed the members to be actually rigid. So length of the member cannot change. So node B cannot displace in X direction. So X B also will be zero because of roller support. Y B also will be zero, but theta B will not be equal to zero. And that will be unknown at node C. We have a free end, but because of actual rigidity, X C will be zero. Y C will be non-zero and an unknown and theta c also will be non-zero and unknown. Now in slope deflection equation method we consider relative deflection or relative displacement of right end with respect to left end. So for segment AB delta AB will be YB minus YA that in this case will be zero because both YB and YA are zero. In the case of segment BC, delta BC will be equals to YC minus YB because YB is zero that will be equals to YC. So for the given beam, the unknown slopes and deflections are theta B, theta C and delta BC. The next step is to find fixed end moments for all beam segments to find fixed end moments irrespective of what the boundary condition or support condition at all the nodes are we assume them to be fixed and for each segment there are two fixed end moments at left end and at right end so for beam segment ab at end a the fixed end moment will be denoted by fem ab and at and B fixed end moment will be denoted by FEM BA. The commonly used fixed end moment values are given for a point load, for UDL, for a point moment, for triangular load with maximum at end of the beam and triangular load with maximum at the midpoint of the beam span. So using this table, we can write fixed end moment for all beam segment. The third step is to write slope deflection equation for all beam segments at all ends. And the slope deflection equation is written in terms of the slopes at all the nodes and the relative deflection of right end of the beam segment with respect to left end of the beam segment. So for beam segment AB at end A, end moment MAB will be equals to fixed end moment AB plus 2 EI by L that is length of beam segment that in the case of AB is L1 into 2 rotation at the left end of the beam segment that is theta A plus rotation at the right end of the beam segment that is theta b minus 3 relative deflection of right end with respect to left end that is delta a b divided by l similarly for the end b of segment a b we can write m b a equals to fixed end moment b a plus 2 e i by l into 2 times theta b plus theta a minus 3 delta a b by l. Here note that for 
whichever end we are writing the end moment equation the rotation for that end will have coefficient 2 and the rotation for other end will have coefficient 1 and there is a generic way of writing this end moment equation that is here n stands for near end and f stands for far end so the rotation corresponding to near end will have coefficient 2 and the rotation corresponding to far end will have coefficient 1 the next step will be to write equilibrium equations for nodes joints and segments and the number of equilibrium equation will be same as number of unknown slopes and deflections and in fact the equations will sort of we can say correspond to those unknown slopes and deflections for example in this case the unknown slopes and deflections will be theta b theta c and delta bc in fact if i look at joint b because we have a roller support it cannot support net external moment so net external moment at joint b should be zero and if i draw free body diagram of joint b there will be a support reaction let's call it rb so this is our segment a b this is our segment b c at the ends of these segments there will be n moments and n forces and i have written or i have shown all the n moments as clockwise because for n moments our sign convention is clockwise n moments are positive so this is our m a b this is m b a that we got using slope deflection equations this will be m b c this will be m c b so at b i will have equal and opposite forces and moments so at joint b if i only look at this part there are two moments this is m b a and this one is m b c and they are both anticlockwise so for moment equilibrium at joint b m b a plus m b c equals to zero in fact we can say that sum of n moments for all the members connected at the joint should be equals to zero similarly we can write sum of all the n moments at joint c equals to zero that will be in this case there is just one member at joint c that is bc and the n moment at c for bc will be m c b that will be equals to zero so this is our first equation this is our second equation and third equation will be a force equation for segment bc and that force equation will be in vertical direction that is sigma f y equals to zero for segment bc this will be our third equation so we have total three unknown slopes and deflections and to find them we have written three equations so using these three equations we can solve for unknown slopes and deflections so we can substitute the n moments obtained using slope deflection equation in equilibrium equations then we can solve for unknown slopes and deflections and using those known slopes and deflections we can find numerical values of n moments using slopes and deflections once we have the n moments the n shears or the shear forces at the ends of beam segments that is these vertical forces in this case can be found using equilibrium equation of beam segments and once the n moments and n shear forces are known for each beam segment then we can easily find support reactions shear force diagram bending moment diagram and deflected shapes